today, Jeff Grant on the 400th meeting of the White Collar Prison Ministries. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back for another episode. I am absolutely thrilled to have back with me Jeff Grant. Jeff is a brother in recovery and he does a whole lot more. So, Jeff, first of all, welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, we're here to actually celebrate your landmark 400th meeting of the White Collar Support Group. Let's start with that. Tell us about that. That's a huge milestone. On February 19th, we will be celebrating the 400th meeting of our White Collar Support Group. On Monday nights, we uh, meet on Zoom and we have members all over the country. We've had over 900 participants in the last eight years. And it's like an AA meeting for people who've been prosecuted for white collar crimes and their families. And really an amazing, soulful, beautiful opportunity to share with people who are like-minded and have gone through the same, uh, the same journey, much of it difficult. And there's a lot of solutions offered, a lot of crying, but a lot of laughing too. We've been through some of the most difficult challenges that anyone could have. It's for people who have been are recently prosecuted or on their way to prison or maybe probation and on their way home. And it's the greatest joy of my life. And 400 meetings is a, a lot, really beautiful. There's a couple of things I wanted to ask you about that I don't think we really explored the first time we had the chance to visit. And the first one came because of a recent AA meeting I attended where we really focused on the family afterwards. Yes. And so I'd like to maybe ask you a few words about the role of the family in your group. Number one, for the white collar criminal, but also your role for the family to help them go through this because it's, as we say, it's a family disease. The meeting on Monday nights is only for people who are directly justice impacted. So people who have, are defendants, basically. But there, there are family groups and there are this as well. And those are run by uh, colleagues of ours. And so there's really a resource for everybody. And um, we are, are it's, it's a big part of our ministry. It's a, uh, the name of the ministry is Progressive Prison Ministries. And we started it um, uh, a little over 10 years ago. And the way we started it was because there were really no, no resources and there was no outreach for people who have been through the issues, but also their families. Like my, my, my family and I had no one to turn to when 20 years ago, all these issues started with me. And of course that was early internet and there were, and people weren't really as talking about their issues as they do now. And we found that the families are really the first victims of white collar crime. In most cases, the spouses have no idea what's going on. And the children, of course, are completely innocent. And the children are ostracized and they're kicked out of, of play dates or of, uh, of events in school, or they're asked to change schools. It can be a very unforgiving and difficult time, even for the children. We make ourselves available for the spouses and, and for family members, because sometimes we're contacted by mothers of people or cousins. It's not surprising probably that sometimes people um, who are being prosecuted for white collar crimes are just so frozen with fear or in so, living in such isolation that they don't know how to reach out for help. So family members are, are often reaching out for help for them. And it's a blessing that we can, we can offer all these services to them. The other thing I really wanted to explore with you, Jeff, is this work's impact on you. Mm -hmm. Because I'm often asked at my level of sobriety, why do you still go? And one of the reasons is because every time I go to a meeting, I learn something or I feel something or I hear something. And it may not be a, something I use that day, but I may catalog it. But mm -hmm. 400 meetings, you've obviously learned a lot. You've obviously grown a lot. I wanted to really explore your experience in this. So could you tell us, a, we didn't focus on you, your experience so much last time, but I really wanted to, to maybe ask you about how you've grown through these 400 meetings and that experience for you. I would say that 
in in a very real sense, this the last eight years of these meetings has been an opportunity to explore my own authenticity and then to share that with other people and try to give them the agency and permission to be able to open up and explore their own. And certainly my path is nothing like most people's path. Everyone's path is their own. But the things I've learned about myself and about my former grandiosity and narcissism and obsessions and compulsions and self-destructive behavior and the things that I was doing, and not just with alcoholism, certainly with almost anything. And now, and I've gotten to learn about it mostly through the eyes and stories of all these people who've joined our support group. An example is I was probably 10 years sober. And so that I was, I was fully five or six years into the ministry. And I was talking with, with a ministee and, and I said to him, do you realize, do uh, you recognize that you've hurt your family in, in through this? And as we talked about it, I realized that I had never come to terms with hurting my own family. I'd never really, even though I had done a ninth step in AA with them, I'd never really come to terms with how much I've hurt them and how much the trajectory of their lives had changed through all of all of my criminal justice issues and all, and how, what a shadow it cast over the family. And how's that possible? How is it possible that I had been doing this work for that long? And I was just, I was just not able to or, or understand it. And I learned about it through the, through, through the people that I've spoken to and worked with. So I would say that, yes, it's true that I've helped a lot of people through a, a lot of their, their issues, but they've helped me. It's very synergistic. And if it wasn't, I don't know if I could be doing it all these years. That is absolutely my experience as well. And the gifts I've received far outweigh whatever gifts I may think I have given, but we are all in this together. And it that's why when two or more gather in our name, I think that's where the magic happens. That's right. Exactly. Uh, We've said 400 a couple of times, and it is a significant milestone, but it's really just one more step in, in your journey and the mission's journey. Okay. But where does, where do you go down the road? Where does the ministry go down the road? Do you have anything planned or are you just going to let it organically grow around you? Uh, the thing is grassroots criminal justice organizations, they barely get off the ground. Yeah. I would say that there, there are criminal justice organizations that never make it to three meetings. And the fact that we've made it to 400 meetings has to do with one thing, and that's unanimity of purpose. We know where our lane is, and our lane is in, supply, in supplying a support group. And we do other services, this mentoring and this peer support, and we have a, a blog, and we have a podcast, and we have a, a Slack group online that that has 24 seven information and, and chat and ways to reach out to people. But all of that is really ancillary to the fact that we are a support group. It's like going to an AA meeting. And even though the meeting itself on Monday nights, which lasts 75 minutes, is the smallest part of what we do because we're all on the phone with each other or emailing or texting each other all week long and providing support. Now, this is a big shift from the days when, when people who were prosecuted for white collar crimes were told, you can't speak to anybody. You, you can't trust anybody. You can't speak to anybody. And in a way that was, you know, empowering the government or even empowering the legal community to keep us away from the kind of information that both gave us the knowledge we needed to be able to move forward, but also the emotional support we needed. And I, I can't even tell you how wonderful it is when people first find out about us and contact us and they've been living in isolation for a year or more. And all they want to do is get out everything they've been feeling and these experiences. And then to learn that the 40 or 50 other people on the meeting that night have all been through it 
and we have these commonalities and it's like everyone thinks they were the only one and it, it, it what a gift from here we, we definitely have plans most of the plans are advocacy related because people who have been prosecuted for white collar crimes really don't have a voice there's still a, not a lot of empathy and sympathy and and it's misplaced people think that's a bunch of rich people who have these small problems and are and who, who can just go back to their lives the way they were and that's the farthest thing from the truth the the it's a very complex human tragedy that we all go through and if we can bring that to light both in stories and in policy advocacy to make the courts more lenient and more compassionate and to hopefully convince prosecutors and judges that non-custodial sentences for for low-level crimes and for non-violent crimes is appropriate, then we can have a lot of impact. Could you say a few words about your podcast? Sure. Our, our, our podcast is called White Collar Week. And we've had that podcast for three or four years now in various iterations. Right now, uh, what we have are uh, speakers in front of a live Zoom audience. And so it's like being on this podcast, but imagine with 30 people who've been prosecuted for white collar crimes sitting in and then the ability to ask questions and really focus on the issues that, that affect them. And the speakers or the, or the interviewees, they love it because you know, on a podcast, you really never know h- how you're affecting the audience. It could be a great conversation like we're having right now, but then it's really meant to hopefully reach the person out there who's suffering in silence. And imagine people out there who are not only live, but they're interrogating the issues and bringing their personal uh, stories into it. So that's what we're doing right now with the podcast. It's available on YouTube and on our website, prisons.org, and also on my law firm uh, website, grantlaw.com. And of course, you know that I got my law license reinstated a couple of years ago, and I'm out there helping the white collar community um, in, in, a, in a new way in a way that so that they can have a lawyer that they can trust as well as a a minister and a support group. And this is just really the greatest blessings of my life. Jeff, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, I wanted to definitely ask if uh, anyone wanted more information on yourself, on the ministries, on really any of your outreach, most importantly, just to let them know they're not alone, what would be the best way to find out more or get in contact? The way to contact us is at our ministry website, that's prisonist.org, that's prisonist like feminist, and there's a page there, prisonist.org forward slash contact, and you can fill out the form, or there's live chat there, and through the beauty of technology and AI, you can reach someone live within seconds now, and so if you're suffering, especially in the middle of the night, or, or these things are rolling around your head, we'll find you someone to speak to immediately because these are ur- urgent current issues. Our 400th meeting again is on Monday night, February 19th. So we're taping this on the 12th. So it's a week from tonight. And I would imagine that it's going to be a reunion of sorts of uh, old timers and newcomers and probably a uh, hundred people or so on a zoom call, all who uh, found a new approach to life, mostly a more spiritual one than a material one. Sometimes circumstances have dictated that, but also real world practical solutions for issues that um, only we can understand. And um, so we hope you'll join us. Jeff, I hope uh, anyone listening who may need this will do as well. I wanted to thank you again for all you do for really all of us. And I look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you, Tom. Really wonderful experience. If you need help with the or from the White Collar Prison Ministries, I hope you will reach out to Jeff. He's one of the most giving, sharing people in the white collar defense world. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. Innovation and Compliance is a part of the award-winning Compliance Podcast Network.